Wow, you guys did not like that video that I did on the creation of my DIY paint booth a little while ago. But what I hope, and based on the reaction on social media, this seems to be the case, is that you will at least like my first creation that has come out of it. Welcome to my guide on how to paint your graphics card. The GTX 980 Ti VR Edition from EVGA provides an industry-leading graphics experience as well as a five and a quarter inch bay with easy access inputs for your VR device. Learn more at the link in the video description. After putting a couple of finishing touches on the DIY paint booth, including finally attaching the fan and putting a shroud of tuck tape around it, as well as taping the drop sheet on the floor to the plastic walls around the outside, it was time to disassemble the card. Now the objective here is to take it down as far as we can to its bare components because the objective is not to just coat the entire thing in a, in a layer of orange paint. I'm actually only looking to change the blasted aluminum parts so I end up with this sick LTT black and orange color scheme. Now this procedure, and this is kind of cool, can be used for painting like what I'm doing, but it can also be used for cleaning out the cooler of many reference NVIDIA graphics cards from the last couple of generations. So uh, make sure you're paying close attention if your GPU starts overheating. To begin with, you'll need a number one Phillips, a number zero zero Phillips, a size one and a half hex, and a size two hex, as well as a little bit of patience. Begin by removing the reference cooler from the PCB. All the screws on the back and the screws along with the hex-shaped DVI retention sockets need to come out. Pull the graphics card itself away from the cooler. We were lucky and all our thermal pads stayed in one place, making reassembly easy later. But if they don't, make sure you put them back somewhere safe. Then remove the two power connectors for the fan and the illuminated GeForce logo and put the video card somewhere safe. We won't need it until it's time to put the entire assembly back together. Now we remove the screws for the top and bottom aluminum fascia pieces. One of them has a little bit of adhesive, so be careful not to bend it while you're pulling it off the cooler. From here, it's basically an exercise in find the screws and remove them. So we took out the screws holding in the plexi window and the ones securing the black shroud that sits around the fan, giving us a great look at the dark nickel plated vapor chamber heat sink that Invisia uses on the 980 Ti. Then we worked our way towards the back of the card. All the black pieces will be put aside since we'll be keeping the factory finish and the aluminum pieces, the last of which we get access to by removing these four screws that were exposed, are taken into the paint booth for preparation. The one screw that we didn't remove was the one holding in the cooling fan on the underside of the unisink that has all these thermal pads on it. There is no need to take this off and I don't recommend painting a fan as it can ruin its balance making it louder and potentially less reliable. Step 1. Prep solvent. I mean, we aren't working with car parts that have been driving around on muddy roads so it's probably not necessary but it can't hurt. Step two is sanding. So we actually took a wet sand run at it with 600 grit. I'm not sure if the anodized finish on these components would have interfered with paint adhesion, but I'm gonna play it better safe than sorry and remove it anyway. Then we wet sand with 1000 grit to ensure that our finished surface will be sexorific by the end. Dry the parts off and it's time to set about priming. Here we went with three light to medium coats, waiting about 10 minutes in between them. With the experience I gained from this project, I would have gone back and done this with white primer, but gray was what I had at the time and it ended up working out not too bad. Now our ambient temperature was a little on the low side, so I actually ended up having to leave the primed parts in the office overnight to cure before I could sand off the dust and imperfections with a very light 600 grit wet sand, dry them again, and then move on to my favorite part, applying the base coat. For the color, I chose a Lamborghini orange that looked dazzling on the web and actually did not disappoint in person. The first coat 
actually very mediocre. It had kind of a yellow cast to it, but as I applied more coats, the vibrancy of the color really started to come through. I ended up using five coats. Then, once we reached the clear coating stage, I actually made a very unexpected decision. Normally, I would want to apply my four to five clear coats and then wait 24 hours and use rubbing compound to bring the clear coat to that glassy, smooth finish. But with the wrinkle powder coat finish of the black components, I find I actually prefer the subtle orange peel texture of the parts without any further finishing. And I understand, normally this is a very undesirable effect in a paint job and considered the mark of a slapdash job, but you know what? YOLO, I like it and I am sticking with it. Which leaves reassembly as the only remaining step. Basically, do everything you just did while you took the card apart, but in reverse order. And you should have yourself an absolutely sick looking reference graphics card. Now, for those of you concerned about warranty on a mod like this, that is a very valid concern, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that on this EVGA card anyway, I actually didn't need to remove any warranty stickers to complete the project. And so, if you were to use Plasti Dip instead of car paint, you could easily take it back apart and peel off the Plasti Dip, reassemble it, and send it back for repairs. No big deal. So happy painting then, guys. Thanks to this guide, you can either clean your NVIDIA reference video card or save yourself the small loan of about $4,000 that it would take to get your hands on a multicolored reference card out of the box. And we're back with another drop. This time, it's the OnePlus 2. Mass Drop is the platform that allows the community to say, hey, we want to deal on like, you know, this knife or that keyboard or this like cool piece of hiking equipment, or in this case, this cool smartphone. Can you go to the manufacturer and say, hey, if we can sell a whole bunch of these, then can you give us a lower price? And that is exactly what happened. So the OnePlus 2 is a five and a half inch 1080p smartphone with a Snapdragon 810 processor, an Adreno 430 GPU, it runs Android 5.1 and has a USB Type-C port for charging and it's available for a limited time only on mass drop so all you got to do is head over to drawdops slash ltt one plus don't worry if that's complicated it's linked in the video description and check it out and while you're over there they've got lots of other cool stuff too so thanks for watching guys if this video sucked you well, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions up there, by buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum, which by the way, you don't have to contribute to. You can just go over there and chat tech and get answers to your questions. It's pretty freaking awesome. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, oh gee, what should I watch next? Well, how about this video right here? I guarantee you, it's awesome. And if it's not, then, uh, now, LMG takes no responsibility for any guarantees made by their hosts and about the awesomeness of the aforementioned videos and see you later.